Welcome back to the Arborgade. I'm Beverly Welch here with Angela Chandler. Good morning. Our partner in education with the Garden Academy. So we're in our little high density area that we've been taking you guys through for several months now. And this is our newest project, an arbor. It's so beautiful. I love it. So we're going to train some pear trees over this arbor. So step one, build an arbor. All kidding aside, step one is to pick a structure. We're so fortunate to have this gorgeous arbor, but you can use anything, a chain link fence, a wood fence, the side of your house, a, a common trellis or a common arbor. But any structure will work. The main key, step two, is picking your tree. Typically, pears and apples lend themselves best to this type of training. They do. What we're gonna do, Beverly, is formal espalier. And so apples and pears are long lived and they maintain their limb structure over time. So they're much more suitable to formal espalier. If we were gonna do an informal style, we might choose something like a peach or a citrus. Okay, now I chose a pear and I chose a, a particular variety called Tennessee, which is a, an eating pear, which is fairly hard to find for us. It really is, and it has a little bit of the Asian pear cross in it, which gives it smaller grit cells, a, a very delicate flavor. Okay, so we've picked our tree. We, we got two, luckily, pretty close to bookends right. in size and shape right now. Size and shape is good, and you know, we in high density, we practice planting lots of varieties. But when we're planting on two sides of an arbor here, we want to make sure that they have the same growth rate and the same bloom time right. for the visual appearance. So that's the reason we chose two of the same pair for this particular project. So step one was our structure. Step two is choosing our fruit. Yes. Step three is planting. It is. And before we plant, since this we're going to leave this tall, uh -huh. I'm going to do a little bit of corrective pruning now. Okay. Being fall, we don't really want to do any heavy pruning. We want it to be planted. We want it to go through its dormancy and just concentrate on growing good roots right now. Perfect. But we do want to remove anything that we know we're not going to keep next year. Okay. So where this limb has been uh, kind of kicked off to the side, I'm going to prune it back, but I'm not going to prune it back all the way to the trunk and the reason for that is there are a few buds here that might be to our advantage next right. spring so we're going to tip this off just outside that bud other than that this one's growing up but because it's still flexible we may be able to train this next year so okay. i'm not going to remove it either other than that we really don't have a lot other than just tipping back anything that we would call in that three D's, anything that's been damaged, dead, or, or you know, doesn't look good, we wanna take it off before we start. Right. But we see that there are good buds here that are gonna to work to our advantage when we start training next year. So perfect. So we've got our tree ready to go, and we're gonna plant here. Of course, we've got Arborgate soil complete, and what we've done on this uh, trellis is build this box. Now I wanna point out that this box is open bottom. Right, so this will, this is just the structure to get it started here and on our trellis. This tree will root into our native soil. Right, and you know, here on the Gulf Coast with our excessive rainfall, it's nice to have things up out of the ground. It is initially for sure, so that we avoid any crown rot issues. Right. Um, and it's just, it's just a really good way to get it off and get it started. Perfect. All right, are you ready to plant? We're ready. Let's go. Plus the fact, how easy is that to dig? This is wonderful. <laughs> it should be so easy all the time. Oh, I'll lose the soil there. It should be this easy all the time. Look at how beautiful this soil is. Oh, it's gorgeous. I don't want to lose any of it. Perfect. Perfect. I think we're in pretty good shape there. I think so. I think centered? so. So I'm going to put a little bit of Arborgate blend down in the bottom of the hole. How easy is that? It's easy. And then I'm going to set this. So I pulled it on out of the pot. Is there anything you want to do with the roots before we plant? You know, I always look to see what we've got here. And this root, the very bottom root, is headed towards the side. Uh -huh. So I'm going to go ahead and prune it back a little bit. 
And the reason for that is just to encourage them to go down before they start to spread. Okay. And when we prune roots, we want to do it the same basic principles as any pruning. Good, clean cuts. Don't break them off. Look for anything that might have been broken while it was being dug and sure. planted. Um, I don't see anything really circling. Yeah, we've got a good root system So Yeah, here. so we're okay for that. And the other thing we want to check for is this root flare. Okay. We want to make sure that we're planting this maybe just with its shoulders a little bit out of the ground. We'll, okay. we'll bring the Arbor Gate soil up to that, but we want to make sure that we don't bury the root flare. That's Perfect. important with any tree, fruit oh, or otherwise. Absolutely. All right, so I'm going to place it down here in the hole. Is there any particular way you want me to Yeah, we kind of want to think about that. We know that we want it to be close. Okay. And I think that gets us off to a good start, Beverly. All right, perfect. I'm going to lift this just a bit so that we do get that shoulder up and put a little bit of swole up underneath here. There we go. How does that look? I think we're in pretty we're good, in good shape. shape. Yes. All right, you ready I'll for me to backfill a yep, bit? Let's, we're ready. So we're going to backfill halfway, and we're going to tamp the soil, but we're not going to pack it hard. Um, especially if you are planting in your native soil, which you would if you were planting this in the ground. Um, we want to make sure that the roots are completely covered with soil, uh -huh. but that we haven't packed any heavy clay around them. Okay. So, about, so we're about halfway now. We're about halfway. And this is a good place to stop and water in because what we're looking to do here is settle any soil, make sure there are no air pockets, air pockets right. around it, make sure that the subsoil around this is thoroughly saturated. And we know with this soil, with its texture, that air pockets are unlikely but well, we want to make sure that right, we, right. we do get well, it off to a Well, you know, and I think, start. too, making sure your root ball is well moistened it, at time of planting. It's easier to keep a moist root ball evenly moist it really than is. to try to moisten it once it's in the ground. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It's even really a good idea to water the entire area a few days before and allow everything to equalize. Absolutely. Absolutely. And here it goes, draining perfectly. Well-drained soil makes a big difference. It does, it does. All right, well, I'll okay, continue bringing our soil around. Whoops. Now, I'm not putting any soil on top that was the top level in the right. pot. Right, we're just watching that root Bringing flare, it making sure that. that it's not covered. So when you're done, it actually does look like it's on a small mound. It does, and that's good for it at this point. Oh, It'll, perfect, that's yeah. beautiful. All right, so we've got it in place. We do. Now, and our next step. Our next step is to go ahead and tie it back. Right. As I said, we're not going to do any heavy training right now. It's just not the right time of year for that. But we do want to go ahead and stabilize it for a couple of reasons. One, with winter winds, we don't want the top to be moving so much that it loosens, loosens our roots. roots. We want the roots to get off to a good start. So we're going to stabilize it for that purpose right now more than anything else. Okay. We'll address the rest of our tiebacks in the spring. Okay. So. Like any time we do this, we want enough of a tie back that we can tie the plant to, let's see, I think we'll, we'll just start right below this crotch right here, okay. that we always want to tie to the trellis first, regardless of what kind of tie we're you know, using. I love that tip. And it's you know, so simple and it's so, it's applicable right. to anything, it keeps, even your tomato plants. It does. It, it keeps the plant from moving. It really does keep it in place better and doesn't risk any kind of girdling of the plant. Right. And then this stuff is lovely because yes. it's flexible. We've cut enough that we have enough to reposition in the future if we need it. We really only need to hold it about that close at this point. We just want to direct the top without doing anything major. And I'm not gonna trim this. I'm gonna pin it back here and keep this in case we need to use this for repositioning next spring. 
That way we're in good shape. It's not going anywhere. Perfect. So no more, no more attaching at this point? Not at this point. Right now, all we're really trying to do is keep the root ball from moving. We want it to go through dormancy. There's not going to be any leaf structure for it to have any right. sale effect. Right. So our, our next thing to do is to water this in completely thoroughly. We'll saturate all of the soil around here slowly, and then we're off to a good start. We'll come back and mulch. Okay, perfect. All right, Angela, the next step, we've got both of our trees happily in the ground. And I guess our next step is iced tea, pears, and cheese. I can't wait. Me neither. Mm -hmm.